Hi, I'm Joel with HRP, and today we're gonna to go over how to use a PID. So this is the PID. It is a field tool that we use, um, geologists and field staff use out in the field to make decisions on the fly. PID stands for Photo Ionization Detector, PID. And um, there's an ultraviolet lamp in here that sucks in air through this end. The air runs over the lamp inside there. The lamp takes VOCs, the electrons of VOCs in the air, breaks them down, sends them up, makes a current out of it, and the current is what you get the reading on here for. So the reading is in parts per million, and right now we have it set to read for isobutylene as our correction factor. You can change your correction factor depending on what kinds of compounds you're gonna be looking for. Um, isobutylene is a range of uh, many different compounds, so it's usually pretty standard, but if you're looking specifically for diesel or fuel oil or you know what you're trying to search for, you can change the correction factor on here to isolate what you're trying to find for VOCs. VOCs are volatile organic compounds. They're found in gasolines, fuels, cleanings, aldehydes, a um, bunch of different alkalines. Out in the field with the PID, it's important to calibrate it each day. Um, humidity and temperature are very important and very, this is very sensitive to both of those. So you want to calibrate this on the site, on the job site. If you have dust in the air, if you're on an active construction site, you want this to be calibrated and it's going to be used where it's going to be used for the day because that way you're getting the most accurate reading. It's calibrated with isobutylene gas. Once again, if you change your correction factor on here, you may have to change your calibration gas as well. That's something you can contact your supplier to go over what exactly you need. You can also change the voltage on the lamp in here to increase the sensitivity. So this is a 10.6 volt, electron volt lamp, and you can change that to an 11.5 and 11.7 lamp, depending on what you're reading for and how sensitive you wanna get. The filters right here can get, they're for moisture, and they can get clogged sometimes, sucking up particles when you're taking readings out of dust bags or out of jars. And um, you don't want your filter to end up looking like this, very dirty, you want it to look clean and fresh. And these filters, once again, should be supplied with your PID, and you should always have some backups of these in the field, just in case. For maintenance for the PID, you wanna keep it clean. You wanna keep this screen out of the sunlight, so when not in use, usually face it down like that, or face it out of the sun like that. And then there's a fan in here that's running constantly as long as the machine is on. When you're not taking readings with the PID, it's important to conserve battery life. So you're gonna to wanna to scroll over on the menu using the over arrow button until you get to enter PC communication and stop measurement, hit yes. And that's gonna turn the fan off inside and you'll hear a noise difference. You'll hear the fan shut off. And then before you go to take your next reading, just hit exit and make sure you're still getting the same baseline reading as you are before, and then you're okay to take your reading. And that'll save your battery life on very hot and very cold days. So the PID is used in the field for a variety of uses. You can take soil samples and read directly from a, either a bag or a jar, depending on which state you're in, or a metallicized bag. If you look up your state, local state regulations on the best uh, practices for using the PID in the field. You can also use it just for ambient air monitoring, so monitoring your work area, or if you're someone's doing saw cutting or some sort of hot work in the area, you can use this to monitor. Depending on where you are in the field, you can always charge an extra battery and bring it with you and just simply swap out the battery in the back here. If you know you're gonna be on a long field day or if it's gonna be used for more than maybe eight hours, it's a good idea to charge an extra battery and bring it with you and have it. So that's the basic use of a PID. If you have any more questions or if you have your own tips and tricks, feel free to leave a comment on the video below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.